Hello, Global Tamian. Welcome again to Adam International Vision Meeting. And good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. We are once again meeting here, all uh, getting together with the Vision Meeting Global Leaders. And today we really have a special leader from USA, Sharon Rose Master Israel Kim, or he's called Forever Opa. <laughs> so we're going to hear his lecture is about the what is the Pareto principle and why is Atomy a great tool. I think we are all excited and we're all fired up to learn directly from our leader, Sir Rose Master Shell Kim. Once again, uh, without further ado, we're going to chant out our company motto. Uh, I hope everyone remembers we don't have to show the slide, right? So let's unmute your microphone. I'm going to unmute everyone. Let's chant out our company motto together okay so company motto are you ready yes yeah, three. count on three one two three cherish, cherish the spirit, the spirit. The spirit. The spirit. create, create the, the vision, vision. vision. follow the faith serve in humility aja 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 thank you so much everyone let me mute everyone again okay so we are all excited today will be our last vision meeting for this season we're gonna take maybe a few weeks break and then we're gonna resume could be another vision meeting or could be the business class i don't know if you remember we had the business class last year and it was really huge we had over 200 people attended so we're gonna keep you updated to your own leaders okay so without further ado i will pass the mic to sharon rose master Israel came israel are you ready yes i am all right there he is the floor is yours israel okay how are you everyone <laughs> Mike, can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you okay. Okay. All right. Well, it's been a little while, team. Um, you know, 6 a.m. Uh, you would think that as a military guy, I'm an early bird guy. But sometimes I am. But if I had an option, I can sleep a little bit more. <laughs> so please excuse me if I don't look as pretty as um, other days. <laughs> okay, today um, I have a very exciting topic. Um, it's uh, called Pareto Principle, which I was first exposed when I was uh, working at uh, General Electric Aviation. So having been in the corporate America, I was exposed to Lin Six Sigma. Uh, so I have a green belt project through that um, corporation. And at the time, I finally got to be exposed to what's called Pareto Principle, which it talk, they talk a lot about 80-20 rope. So hopefully I'm not too dry today because it can get a little dry. So I try to be as fun as possible, but I have a um, small video that I can, a short video I can show. So allow, please allow me to play a video real quick and then we'll get started. Have you ever been interested in becoming more productive or managing your time better? Then you've most likely come across the Pareto Principle before, also known as the 80-20 rule. If you've never heard of it, then you'll learn more about it in this video. The Pareto Principle states that in any situation, 20% of the inputs or activities are responsible for 80% of the outputs or results. And I'll explain what that means in a second. The principle was named after an Italian economist, Wilfredo Pareto. He first observed this law in his own garden. What he noticed was that 20% of the pea pods generated 80% of the healthy peas. This observation led him to discover that 80% of the land in Italy was owned by just 20% of the population. And we can see this concept everywhere in our daily lives. For example, you wear 20% of your clothes 80% of the time. In a book, 20% of its pages contain 80% of the most important information. 20% of the company's customers produce 80% of company's revenue. When it comes to YouTube, 
20% of my videos generate 80% of my views and subscribers. The Pareto principle shows up over and over again almost in every field. But the inverse is also true. That means that the other 80% is only generating 20% of the results. However, you should note that this is not a universal law and it can differ in many situations. It's not always going to be 80-20, it could be 70-30, 90-10, basically anything. The point is that the majority of results come from minority of causes. And the minority of results come from the majority of causes. Now that we've established that this principle does indeed hold true, let's take a look at how you can use it in your everyday life. Time is our most precious resource. We all have the same amount of time in our day. But most of us don't use that time efficiently. There is a difference between being busy and being productive. Most people think that working more hours will get them more results. However, it's not about the time you put in, it's about how well you spend that time. If you haven't applied the Pareto principle in your life yet, you're most likely just being busy. However, when the principle is utilized correctly, it enables you to do more by doing less. If we go back to our previous example, we said that 20% of a book will give us 80% of the information. That means that 80% of a book will only give us 20% of its value. Let's say it takes you 10 hours to read 100% of that book. By applying the Pareto principle, you know that 80% of the most important information can be found in just 2 hours. Yes, you could go deeper and learn more in depth if you wanted to, but note that you will most likely have to spend 8 hours to get those extra 20% of the information. It's up to you to decide if you think it's worth it. If you're still in school, you can also take advantage of the 80-20 rule. The exams never contain 100% of the content. Never. Otherwise, it would be a 50-page exam. You can get a good grade by identifying which 20% of the content you were studying in class is the most important. Studying the right topic for 2 hours will get you a much better grade than studying the wrong topic for a whole week. Again, you could reread every single page of the textbook and get that 100%. But if being a top student is not your priority, then it just might not be worth your time. You can even do a Pareto analysis on your friendships. What you're most likely to find is that 20% of the friends give you 80% of fulfillment and joy that you get from social interactions. The other 80% of your so-called friends are only giving you 20% fulfillment. Now, you don't have to cut away all those friendships completely, but you don't have to spend an equal amount of time with all your companions. It's much better to have a few close friends than to have a bunch of really distant friends. This is why you should spend more time on the 20% that give you the most satisfaction and commit less time to the other 80%. And that pretty much sums up the Pareto Principle aka the 80-20 rule. It can be applied to almost any area of your life whether it's business or free time. If you can identify the 20% that produces the greatest outcome, you can spend more time doing that to create an even greater payoff. It also helps you cut back on the 80% of things that waste your time which create only 20% of the results. It encourages you to think efficiently and focus on what is actually important. So think about what are some things that you could double down on and which ones you should eliminate. Let me know how you're going to use the 80-20 rule in the comments below. For example, I have noticed that I use 20% of my shoes 80% of the time. This is why I threw the 80% I wasn't using away, because all they were doing is taking up my space. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to leave a like. Okay, so since this is a I want it to be a little bit interactive today. Can anyone give me an example of the 80-20 rule besides the fact that we could have just watched the video 20% of the time to get 80% of the information? <laughs>
<laughs> I was reading reading some comments below, and then somebody said, "I just wasted my time because I watched the whole video. I should have just watched the twenty percent of it." <laughs> so, yeah, can anyone share what um, what eighty twenty rule you're using today? Have, has anyone heard of the Pareto analysis before? Principle, any real life example you can share? You can unmute if you or raise your hand. Okay, maybe. Uh, mm -hmm, there you go. Yep, 20% of our clothes in closet 80 percent of the time so that means we can probably even donate some of the clothes to people that if we're not wearing right what about judy from australia you have your hands raised i was i was just going to say the same thing that um christelle was saying 20 i only wear about 10 percent of the clothes in my closet uh-huh very true yeah we've been trying to this actually get around to actually throwing out or getting rid of it is the the key here. <laughs> yes. And then, yeah, Christina, you're right. 20% of Atomia members are building 80% of the business. Yeah, we can definitely apply there. And, you know, out of the time we have, we, if we can use essential time for Atomy, then we, we're going to be able to build 80% plus, probably 90% with the earnings, right, through Atomy. The rest are just consumers, okay? Yeah, in the later slide, I'm gonna show um, how many percent of the members of Atomy are actually earning commission. Okay, we have a lot of members around the world, 15, 16, 17 million members, but there are only so many members that are receiving commission. So I'm gonna also show that. I think Carmen had a hand, hand raise. I'm not sure if she wants to also share before I showed. Hi, hi everyone. Hi, Easy. Um, hi, Carmen. Yeah, um, actually, I re I, re I rose my I raised my hand. Um, to just uh, actually just want I'm excited to hear Pareto. Um, I use usually from my I, I Pareto principle Pareto chart. I use it from in my line of work. So hearing that here now, I'm just a bit excited. But actually, the the if it's data analysis, it's actually the twenty percent is the is the most uh, data data that we based on if we want to analyze things. So, yeah. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. So let me share my screen. Okay, so everyone knows me as a forever opa. So I was talking to Christina the other day and I was like, I'm so glad no one else took the name because I'm the first one. So, all right, again, my name is Israel Kim Sharon's master. And, you know, for those of you who don't know me, um, I'm currently working at a corporate America called Raytheon Technologies. We make, we make uh, missiles and uh, missiles and um, uh, what do you call it? circuit cardboards and things like that for our jet, jet fighters. And I was watching Top Gun. How many of you watched the Top Gun, the new one that came out? Uh, it was a really good movie. And then, and uh, there was a missile that uh, they launched before uh, Tom Cruise started flying to the uh, enemy zone. And those missiles that were launched were Tomahawk. And it was really cool because I actually managed the program Tomahawk. And uh, I managed what's called circuit card assembly that goes into Tomahawk. So. It was really cool to see my uh, one of my uh, programs being in the uh, being featured in the movie, and I'm also in the uh, United Air Force as a captain right now in uh, in in, in um, Atomy Center leader of San Diego Global Center. So, yeah, that's a little bit about me. So, what is Pareto principle? And we just kind of um, got to watch the video a little bit and then learn what it is about. Usually, people call it 80/20 rule, and uh, the definition I pull. Um, was Pareto principle is an aphorism which asserts that 80% of outcomes or outputs result from 20% of all causes or inputs for any given event. So we say in, in the military, I used to always say 80% um, of the problems are caused by 20% of the problems. 
And unfortunately, we spend way too much time dealing with just the problems because the, they produce the 80% of the problems. And uh, we say, how can we reduce the time amount of time we're wasting our time with the uh, bad soldiers, right? We want to spend also with the good soldiers too, right? So we, uh, those were the things that we talked about when it, when it came to Pareto analysis. And very important of understanding the Pareto, Pareto principle is this, productivity. How can we be most productive when we are doing atomy? Uh, how can we be most productive just in our daily lives, right? Dealing with our friends, right? Even they mentioned some people have so many friends um, in, on Instagram and social media, but how many of them are actually friends? And um, I'm not trying to be hating or anything, but I have some friends that have lots of followers and they post pictures, they go out um, and they have so many friends. Um, seems like it, but then I sometimes wonder, even, even for my life example, I had a lot of friends in LA when I was singing and how many of those are, were my actual friends, right? And I feel like right now, the 20% of the true friends that I have are mainly through Adam. And, you know, we have a global um, leader, the chat room through WhatsApp, and we have a lot of interaction. We, I got to share my, you know, La Hoya journey yesterday with the team and Mike and, you know, our team members, we always share our lives too, not just talking about work. So yeah, I feel like, um, you know, a lot of my true friends are, are through Adam that I met. And, um, yeah, I just wanted to, you know, let us um, kind of think about it, right? So we can be as productive as possible. And I have another slide that I can share. And this is a real life example. And I pulled this from 2016 when I did uh, Greenbelt uh, Six Sigma project. And I just wanted, wanted to kind of show it to you because it talk, kind of talks about how the wastes are created and what I did to combat that. And then Six Sigma is a real life example. And I hope it really kind of gives you, again, it's, it can be a little dry, but then it's pretty cool actually. So when I was working at GE, there was a, there were, there was a lot of chaos because we were doing a lot of manual work. We were spending so much time, 80% of our time to just get the 20% of the outcome. And the reason was because um, we were using a lot of boxes we were using, um, so when, the, when we received the product, products in, we were um, receiving a lot of engine spare parts for aircrafts. And then there were, um, you know, nuts and bolts, bolts, and there were large spare parts, some, um, some of the pretty cool parts that go into aircraft engines. But then when they receive it in, um, sometimes uh, if we don't have a need right away, we will put them in the uh, little section called mini pick or we will have them in the storage area. If the parts were received and in through the computer and it realizes we need the parts right away and shipped, then you will go straight to the production floor um, through the conveyor belt. But thing was, once we receive it in and then the employee puts it into the conveyor belt, then we lose the visibility. We lose the tracking. It's just part um, that it has the number, four numbers on the tote or um, on the pallet it was a one, two, three, four, or three, four, five, six, whatever the number is, then we as managers, if we get a call from our customer saying, oh, we have this job on your floor, we need to get that product uh, right away. It means air, aircraft on ground or whatever it is, they need the part right away. Then I will pull the report and I will see maybe three to five, sometimes thousand parts right on in the production floor. Then I will be looking at the total number, let's say the example, if I see that in the computer, it says, but this uh, spare part was in the total number one, two, three, four. Then with my eyes, I will be looking through all hundreds of different parts in the middle of the production floor so that I can grab it and then give it to the employee and say, we need to get this out right away. So you can only imagine me wasting, me and my employees wasting so much time looking through the hundreds of parts in the middle of the shop floor just to get that, just to find that one product out, just because my customer called me. So I was thinking, what can I do to reduce the time that I'm spending every single day answering the phone? They say, I need to get these parts right away. And I'm literally walking around the shop floor with my employees and to just finally locate the part. So that was my project to reduce that um, time being wasted. It was called WIP, which is um, Work in Process 
um, days in process. And then, you know, I was a project leader and so forth. And then, like I said, we had receiving um, through internally, we have a you know, storage room. Sometimes the job gets created. Um, the system knows, right? Customers will see that we have um, certain part numbers in the warehouse, then they will trigger the order. If not, then we get a delivery from the truck every each day. And then we will get um, that, that's what's called an external receiving, right? And then we had all these, you know, don't, don't get overwhelmed by all these um, word verbiages, but basically this is it. Um, the simple way to put it is we receive part, whether it's whether from our storage room or from our external vendors and all get, you know, uh, received into the central area and it gets processed through our uh, shop floor. And um, that's the, so that's the layout. So my biggest thing was fivefold. Whatever we receive in, we want to get that out first. Okay. Remember, there are hundreds of different parts in the flowing through the conveyor belt. Sometimes um, the fivefold work, which is first in, first out, it wasn't done correctly. And the, the reason I said was it, it was difficult to locate specific parts. And um, there's a lot of uh, professional terms. So, um, so basically, yeah, we wanted to make sure that whatever we received in, in first, we could get it out without us having to locate it with our uh, naked eyes. And then there were, so FIFO was one of the issues. And then another one was uh, personnel. So some, sometimes my employee will receive it into their desk and then they will be working on it and their shift ends, they go home, okay? Then that job is on that um, employee's desk. And then you're sitting there and then if the employee for some reason didn't, uh, didn't come in the next day or they went on a vacation, then that job will be sitting on that person and then you will just start accumulating days. So again, guys like me, like supervisor, will have to locate it on my um, report and say, why? Why is this job sitting on the floor for five days? Okay. So then we will be, you know, looking everywhere and then seeing who touched the part last. Sometimes they don't even register it in. So um, then it was just causing a lot of chaos. So my goal was to expedite the um, job, um, receiving process and getting the pro products out um, from... Um, many different days to, you know, as uh, less days as possible. And then that was it, days in process. So my goal was to reduce the days in process from like 3.7, eight days to 3.3 days. And then I was able to track that through my uh, system that I was using. And then that's where it has access. Access is our inputs. So it is um, what, what are the access inputs that are causing the outcome, right? So again, I talked about personnel and IT, but sometimes sometimes there were systematic issues, right? And then FIFO, first in, first out, and processes. And those were my access. And then FIFO, first in, first out, I was able to, to um, think of what's called uh, color stickers. So whenever they receive in the uh, parts, uh, if, they, if, if it was Monday, I would have them put the label that says Monday with a different color. So there were seven different colors throughout the day. And then if they were receiving on Tuesday, I will have a, um, my employees slap on the Tuesday sticker. So now there were a bunch of totes, not just with the number, but then now they even had the colors, stickers on it. So when we were looking for some of the hot parts that we wanted to get out, we knew exactly what to go for. And employees weren't, you know, they didn't need to hear what, uh, what jobs needed to go out first because they already saw the color stickers. Okay, so this is an example um, on the tote. You know, you see the you know Tuesday here and Monday here, right on the right top corner. So obviously, if they were you know following through there, then the employee will automatically know that Monday job is hotter. Uh, they need, need to go out before Tuesday, and then so now employees weren't able to pick and choose whatever they wanted to do because <laughs> sometimes they don't want to. Um, they, they don't want certain job, right? So they will pick something instead of um, something that needs to get out before. So yeah, that was a really fun project. And then this is a little, little graph that I can show you. The days in process um, on the left, it was before and after. You can see through the graph um, that it actually went down uh, quite significantly. So the average of the days in process went from 3.74 days to 2.96 days which has saved a lot of money for the company. If you think about it, this project uh, was launched 2016 and 
um, I kind of give myself a lot of prop, but because it's sustainable. Because some, a lot of times we launch a project, even in our life, we try to fix something in our life, but then it is not sustainable. If I say it, I'm gonna wake up every day at 4.30 a.m., right? Is it sustainable? <laughs> It's not really sustainable for me because there are days I go to sleep at 12 or one that I'm already setting myself up for failure, right? So I wanted something that's sustainable. And um, I called my friend who works at the department yesterday, actually, at GE. The project that I launched in 2016, it is still being done today. So if I launch some rocket science project that I thought I'm so smart, then it, it will not be there today. But this color sticker project is still there today. And um, again, I'm a little sorry that it was a little dry, but hopefully you got to see in the real life example, how the Pareto analysis is um, really looked at. And then when we launch a project, we really look at the 80-20 rule and we try to eliminate a lot of um, waste being created and try to be more productive. So why is now, let's go back to our real life, you know, now today. Why is understanding Pareto uh, principle important, even when we are doing anime or even in our life in general? And during my vision speech, I talk a lot about the fourth industrial revolution because the world is trending towards automation. The world is trending towards the artificial intelligence. And what they're doing is they're trying to eliminate all the waste being happening and all the money that they're spending. So if a company looks like a company, for example, Uber, the, their probably biggest expense is probably their drivers, right? So the drivers is causing uh, probably 80% of their whole um, annual spend. So what is Uber gonna do or Lyft gonna do is get rid of the driver. How do they do that? By hiring a robot, right? Instead, uh, creating a self-driving car, which you know, Tesla is already you know, almost getting there. And we're gonna have more self-driving cars in the future. So then, that's how the company is going to be reducing the waste. And that directly affects many of our lives because many of our jobs are done manually, right? And we are not a lot of us are computer scientists writing programs and, you know, dealing with the artificial intelligence. I wish I had that brain, but I don't. So, and our CEO actually uh, put this up on his slide. The future, future looks even more scary. The jobs are going to become far less and less. And CEO Hong Kyo Park said, this study was done by Seoul National University. Um, and then um, only the top 0.003%, right? Will um, over, overrode the 99.997% of the world wealth, okay? And that's gonna happen in 2090. So right now we're in you know, 2022. And I think probably right now, 10% um, of the people own 90% of the wealth. That's kind of like my thought. It used to be 20% of the people own 80% of the wealth. I think nowadays it's probably 10 to 90 because during the pandemic, what happened? A lot of small businesses shut down their doors, right? So a lot of the middle, middle class, in, even in America, has collapsed. And they're now back to probably at the bottom, right? So what's going to happen in 10 years? I really think that only 1% of the population will control the 99% of the wealth. And that's how it's going to get gradually become 0.003% holding 99.997%. Now, if that doesn't scare you, I don't know what else will. That is exactly the reason why I am so grateful that we have found Adam. And that's why we are waking up 6 a.m. in the morning or someone staying up late at night in different parts of the world, listening to this because we are serious of our lives. And trust me, you are, we are all very lucky and blessed to have this platform. And did it cost us any money? We, it didn't, right? And I'm gonna compare the people that are not ready to people that are gonna be ready. So in, in America, a couple probably earns about $5,000 a month as an average, maybe a little higher, maybe a little less. And most, most of them have active income. For example, my dad was driving Uber. I told him to do anime so many times. He does not like getting rejected, okay? So he, you know, he has that you know, traditional Korean man um, <laughs> culture. So he tried anime for a little bit. He's still a member, of course, he's still a consumer. But then 
he got rejected a couple of times and his pride was hurt and he said he's not doing it. So guess what he did? He was driving Uber instead and he was earning active income. And guess what? Like I explained earlier, uh, if the self-driving car comes out, what is, what's going to happen to him? He's going to lose his job, right? Along with many, many other truck drivers and so forth, et cetera. And what about when he was sick? When he was feeling sick, was he earning any income? No, right? If he couldn't go drive Uber that day, he was not able to make money that day. So that's a lot of the population right now in this world. So they're going to work, have active income until when? They call it what's called first retirement. And the reason why it's called first retirement is because it's not really a true retirement. They have to get a second job, right? I have a friend who is a army veteran. He served in the military, in the army for 30 years. The first thing he did after retiring was looking for a job. And I said, hey, brother, uh, why are you looking for a job when you're retired and you're receiving a pension? And he said, because my pension is not enough. So an army veteran, he retired as a captain. So it's not a low rank either. So if he retired as a captain, and even then his pension was enough, then most of the 90% of the military members who are retiring would not be earning sufficient amount of the pension out of the military. So they're going to be looking for a second job. So that really also um, made me think why enemy is such a good tool because we have what's called residual income. We have what's called system generating income that's going to continue to pay us the rest of our lives. So we are that top 20% of the group. We're that 10% of the group that's continuously building what's called earning assets. Um, that's equivalent to us being having the system generating income. The earning asset is more like if people have a lot of money to invest, and if they were uh, investing in the real estate and things like that, if I had rich parents and they you know, inherited me like in $2 million worth of house, I can rent that out and then I can create that earning assets. And then with the money that I get, I can invest in more properties and so on. And those will be the earning assets. And those type of people, um, when they get older, they will have even more money than they did before. And that's kind of like us with, without having to invest millions of dollars through a tool called Anatomy. And then this, is um, something that, um, Ju, thank you very much for uh, providing this information. And I'm sorry, it's kind of messy. I didn't have time to really dive into making that really pretty, but it does its job, okay? Uh, like, uh, like Christina said, she said 20% of the enemy members are pretty just 80% of the result. And then I looked at the amount of the people, right? Or the amount of the members that received the commission, okay? So 88%-ish of the people received, uh, did not receive any commission. And I really want you to really think about this. So if all of the enemy members receive commission, then our end value will drop, right? Then our, if our end value drop, then we're gonna, you know, um, we're not gonna make the, you know, in USA term, USD, US, US dollar term, we're receiving, receiving a little less than $60 per paycheck right now, right? If we match 15 points. But if all of the all of the enemy members um, were actually doing the business, not just the consumer, then we our end value will drop significantly. However, I don't know if I should say thankfully or you know, <laughs> uh, most of the enemy members are consumers. Okay, the reason why other network marketing companies do not work is because they don't have enough consumers. Most of the people that are in there is to make money. Okay, so. If, if the marketing plan is become shaky or if someone's doing the business and if they don't earn money, then they quit. Do they continue to use the product? They don't. But what about Anatomy? CEO Hunger Park said this so clearly, loud and clearly. He said, you do the business only if you think that you're going to continue to consume products even if you don't, don't do the business. I think Anatomy is such a strong company because of this um, data over here. Most of our members are consumers only, okay? Only less than 10% of our members are actually earning commission. And that is counting someone that's even earning one commission a year. And that is a very significant uh, thing to know, okay? And then if I looked at the people that are earning, you know, at least, um, you know, like an auto sales master, 
And I think um, one of the leaders, uh, Bumsu Kim, uh, he's now a royal master. He broke down into um, you know sales master being more more like a 0.5 percent of the whole members. Maybe the number has changed a little bit looking at this data especially. But what what he's saying is, don't let the number scare you 0.5 because now only less than 10 percent of the members even earn one percent commission. And he said, how do we get into the 0.5 percent if not less today? To become an auto sales master enough is this. Follow the eight steps to success and do eight core. Spend that 20% of our time in with the admin. You know, if I we have if we have um, so much time, right? We have a lot of wakes being created every day. 80% of what we do is probably a wakes, right? Uh, or something that we could have been a little bit more productive. And using the Pareto principle, I want us to be more productive with the admin. Right. If there's a K drama you want to watch, I'm sorry, K dramas are awesome. I know, <laughs> but uh, what you know, reducing the time to focus on anime, something that really produces the 80 percent of the outcome, if not 90 percent of the outcome, and down the road in your life, it could be even 99.999 percent of the outcome could be done through the anime. And then at the time, you're probably not even spending that much time. Do you think Imperial Master uh, spend? majority of their days just to get me alone? No, Imperial Masters, they're all set. Um, they're playing golf, they're traveling around the world, and um, of course they're still engaging into meetings. But then I heard one of the Imperial Masters saying, uh, he was gonna take like three years of vacation, right? <laughs> so for Madame, like he was just you know, traveling around the world with his family. He didn't even need to do Adamy for three years and he was still earning all these incomes. So why not now? Reduce all your waste of your life, in your life. Reduce the time you're going out with your friends, um, including myself, right? Uh, reduce the time, um, you, know, in, you know, entertaining yourself, right? Why not reduce the time now and the focus on anatomy, right? And dive in, you know, you know, Jason Shim told me the other day, go crazy about it. He always gives me a check. Um, it, it's an honor sometimes that to receive a call from him. He's a crown master. He called me uh, the other day. He said, Israel, how are you doing today? And then I said, fine, sir. And he said, I don't think you're going crazy about anime right now. Are you? <laughs> and I said, honestly, I'm not going too crazy. I'm, I am crazy about anime. Don't get me wrong, but I could be more crazy. So that means re reducing the waste that's being created in my life. And I uh, challenge you to the same as well. So and why Atomy is an amazing tool to create the wealth is because we, it doesn't cost us a lot of capital, right? It, it, it's, we start now and focus, and guess what? We don't have to do this rest of our lives, right? Yes, we are gonna continue to do Atomy rest of our lives, but we're not gonna have to spend the same amount of time with Atomy because now we focus now, then later in life, like the Imperial Master said, we will be able to enjoy the rest of our lives without having to work, work, work all the time, right? And that's the whole point of uh, creating, doing the network marketing. And not all network marketing companies are created equal. And Anatomy is the top, top network marketing company that I've ever seen in my life. If it was Anatomy, I would not be in the network marketing business right now. If I, if I, I've, been, um, I've, I've been recruited by so many of my friends who's been, who's been doing the A company, right? The other A company who's been around for a long time. My friend who's been doing uh, the other Amway, right? Uh, for I think 10 years, his residual income is $500 a month. <laughs> After 10 years, he attended so many seminars. He flew everywhere around, in, around the United States. He had to pay to uh, enter the seminar, needless to say. But mind you, uh, enemy, we don't have to pay. We only pay for the food, right? And um, yeah, so now uh, he's earning his own. make purchase first uh, day of the week, a month, um, they have to spend like $300. So that's not really truly residual income for me. But anyways, uh, to end the meeting today, um, I hope you found some of this information um, productive um, and, and helpful. And um, I hope this got to kind of encourage you to see what is waste being created around in your life where so, we, so that we can focus on the um, um, enemy. And then who is that 20% of the enemy leaders that you need to really focus? Because, right, we get in, discouraged so much. We talk to so many different leaders or partners we have in, 
yes, it is very important that we touch all ADME members, but we only have limited time. So who is that 20% or 10% of the leaders in your ADME that you can focus on to create 80 to 90% of the outcome, right? Okay, so yeah, that's all I have today. Um, again, my name is Israel Sharon Master from San Diego Bullet Center, Forever Opa. Uh, it was a great honor and pri privilege to share um, information with you. Thank you. Thanks so much, Israel Kim. Amazing. Parito. <laughs> so I think a lot of uh, employees probably heard this uh, principle so many times, right? So for me, this is first time looking at all those charts, like I was sitting in the interview <laughs> my first day. Anyway, anyone want to give a comment um, about the uh, the lecture, the part two? Maybe like the 2080 rules that have you applied in your anime business. Maybe we can try to uh, interact with, with this uh, topic, okay? Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll give a few, some of the real examples of what is the 20% activity in anatomy, right? Meeting new contacts, right? Presenting, give them like a presentation, marketing plan, compensation plan, or company information, following up. What else? What is the 20% that we're doing in anatomy? Self-development. Remember, this 20% will make up the 80% of our income. What is the other 20%? Communicating with our team. Data, yes. Rewarding all the materials that um, would provide them information about Atomy, inspire them. Yes. Yeah, that's like showing the plan or shared vision, right? That is the 20% that will make up the 80% of the income. Then if you know this 20% activities will create the 80%, we should focus on this. Now, what is the 80% that we wasted so much time, but only generate the 20% of our income? What is that? Can someone give example? Sorting business cards, sorting the contact list, entering names into the database, maybe if you have a database, you put all the names, right? Running around, but Selling product. Don't, don't get any results. What is that, Israel? Driving Selling, around to sell products. Selling <laughs> products, yes. That's consumed a lot of your time, right? And remember, this 80% activities, you must do less because this is less money you make when you do this more, right? So 80-20% rule in Atomy, there are four key elements for me, right? The first one is in the prospecting. Of course, we have to do our own prospecting. And the second one is we have to do this in our leadership. This is for the duplication. And also the third one is for the consumers, which is very important, right? We need to know what are the activities, 20% and 80% for our consumers. And the last one is for our own self developments. Okay. Anyone want to give an example? What is a 80, 20% rule in the prospecting? Christina says attending Zoom meetings and other taking action on what you learn from Zoom meeting. Yes, that's right. Most of us, we are 80% learning, but only 20% action in the field. <laughs> you should reverse it. Only do 20% of the learning, but the, the remaining 80%, you should be focused on the field. Remember, our uh, Imperial Master says this, right? The money is not the online. There's no online in the Zoom meetings. The money is in the field. When you spend most time in the field, meeting prospect, meeting your consumer, meeting your partners, although they say that 20% of your activities in your leadership, this will create your 80% of the income. So what is the 80, 20% the prospecting that we wasted so much time in the 80%? We spend too much nagging or crying or asking why these people are not joining. Remember, if let's say you have 10 people that you prospected, right? 
only two people join or interested in the business, but the other eight people says no. And then you keep just focusing on what did I do wrong? What did I uh, must fix on these eight people that says no, right? Remember, these eight people are not making your 80% of your income. These two people that you actually say yes or interested, that makes up your 80% of your income. Don't waste time too much in the thing that will never make your income. That is in the prospecting. What is on the second one? In, your, in the leadership on your duplication. What is the 80-20% rule that we can apply on our leadership and duplication? Anyone want to open your mic? I'm sure, Christina, Diamond Master, you must be a lot of part-time leaders. Yeah, Carmen, go ahead. Hi, everyone. I think um, in terms of leadership skills and duplication, I think we should always look for best practice. I mean, best practices no, from other leaders, from our partners, sponsors, or, you, you know, um, by by just uh, like uh, being able to engage with uh, fellow atomians and and asking and um, joining meetings and such so you get to pick pick out some best practice that will work for you so with that you don't waste time of um you know thinking what can i do because the, the actual answers are like in this um forum or in this in this platform because from here we can get the best practice out of the sharing that we in this meeting and then we get to apply it to our own um you know um dealings uh in terms of our academy business so i guess yeah that's yeah. what i would like to <laughs> that's right yeah. yeah picking up the best practices for your own group because everyone will be has uh we, we will have different groups and especially when you have global businesses philippines market different from canadian markets from different from u.s markets right there are things that all the leaders are giving out on the lecture. We have to pick what are the best practices that works into our groups, right? That is a good example. The most that uh, we wasted 80% too much in our leadership is this. Once you become a diamond master, I'm sure we have a lot of diamond master here. We're going to have a lot of partners, right? Under us. Not all partners are willing to be worked with, correct? Some are nagging, some are complaining, some are on fire all the time so we need to select them we have to make sure that we work with the right partners because this 80 percent that are not workable they're only making the 20 percent of income so stop wasting our time especially our time because this is the most precious uh, commodity right Stop wasting our time with this 80% that only contributes to our 20% of our income. Okay. And this 20% that really valuable that we can be working with, they deserve the time and actually most of our time working with them. If you do this, then you'll see the result of the 80% of the income will be generated by this 20%. So don't waste your valuable time on the 80%. Now, the next one with the consumers. Yes, Chriselle said priority prioritizing the most hardworking leaders who produce outputs. That's correct. Yeah. And that is the sad fact that we cannot work with everyone. That is the sad fact. We, we can only work with only like a few hands of people that we can work with, right? You don't need like 100 people to be Imperial Master. You only need two on the left two on the right which is your two crown master and two crown master on the right that's you're going to become an imperial master yes jackie go ahead oh, for consumers if you do a lot of door-to-door -door sales and delivering and that's kind of only 20 percent that's right that's what israel kim says right focusing on selling <laughs> delivering the products right Anyone else for the 82% rule for the consumers? Yeah, basically we need to identify who are this 20% of our consumers and we give them the best service. If you have to drive 
two hours to deliver, but if this consumer makes up of your 80% of your income, do it. Do it, right? We need to serve them the best services. Not all consumers are equal. You know that, right? So you need to pick who are the consumer that you want to work with. So the last one on the self-development, how can we apply this part to principle 80, 80 20% rules? Self-development, which I think this is the most important, right? When you succeed in anatomy, it's not about how much money you bring in the bank, but what kind of per a person that you become. Did you change to a better person with more values? Then you need to do something in your self-development. Make time, yes. Uh, Jessica, maybe you want to speak in self-development? Thank you, Israel. Um, what he shared today is actually something new to me. I am not actually familiar with it, but after you explaining it, then I do notice that, oh, okay, I think what I've been doing is actually right. I don't spend like 24 hours doing it to me. What I do is I do allocate time, which is managing time, which for myself, for my partners and for my team. So allocating all this so that we don't overwhelm ourselves and overstress ourselves. So I do think that um, in self-development, it is very important because if we don't upgrade ourselves, we don't need like to learn 24 hours. Just like today's session, it is like 20% of my time uh, I learned from here. So I obtain those knowledge, just like the Pareto. Then I can actually um, bring this into my team and I can educate them, teach them how it is done and how we can actually help a lot of people to manage their time more, more efficiently rather than um, as uh, Israel said, 80% wasting of all time. 20% can actually impact a lot and 20% uh, can actually do a big impact, especially with that 20%, it is duplicated. And that is how we actually build and all the terms that Mike had uh, mentioned just now from a leader, consumer, and so on. All right, so that's all. Thank you so much, Mike and Israel. Thank you, thank you, uh, Jessica. Yeah, that's right. Nowadays, uh, especially with this COVID pandemic, everyone is going online. We watch YouTube 24 seven, right? <laughs> and when your leader says, you need to read a book, you need to watch video, right? And then just they just scramble online and look for any books, any kind of books. We wasted so much time reading this book for like maybe an hour and then switch to another book for an hour and then switch to another book. You don't have a sense of where you want to read. <laughs> It could be a curse, right? This nowadays we have these online uh, options. So you need to identify what is your weakness in your self-development and just focus on that area. Let's say your weakness is how to influence other people. Maybe you, you need to read a book or find a book that really focus on how to make friends, <laughs> how to win other people, right? There, there are books like that, how to influence friends and win. Uh, sorry how to influence people and win friends that is a very very good book so just focus on that book maybe you can repeat it after you finish this the first time maybe you repeat it until like five times if you are like me you listen to audiobooks i usually i don't listen one time when i listen the first time i repeat it again before i jump to another book so i repeat it again at least three times i want it to be synced in into my subconscious right until i speak it in my dream so you should focus your learning on the area you are the most weak at right now. So once you finish that, once you know that you develop that, then you move to another book, right? Understand the need to update ourselves in terms of leadership, sharing, and much more. We can upgrade by stages. Yes, there are stages of development. Any, I think any part of life, we are not uh, taking elevator instantly to the top level, we need to take stairs. So there are stages in our development as well. Thank you, Jessica. So if you're weak as prospecting, you need to read a book about prospecting, how to talk to people, how to start a conversation. But the good thing about anatomy, like our chairman part, we don't need to think too much about what to say. Just open our mouth and say, 
Do you know Atomy? <laughs> Do you brush your teeth? Do you shampoo your hair? We have a better product, cheaper price. Give it a try, right? It's easy in Atomy. That's why in Atomy, we don't have any self-doubt that I'm going to hurt somebody that I speak with, right? But in a company or other company, I think just to be honest, when you join those company, there's like a sub, there's like a small voice in your self-conscious says, I'm going to hurt this person if they join. Am I right? I think, is it only me or everyone like here like, like that? When you want to open your mouth, sharing about that company that you join, you feel a sense that they're going to be hurt. Or at least you've been hurt. You want them to hurt as well with you. <laughs> at least you share the burden with them, right? Anyone actually, feels that? Uh, one of my, yeah, go ahead. One of my partners just um, shared the anatomy with somebody else who also had an intention to share her network marketing with her. And after her having um, her, my partner's friend having done network marketing for three months, she said she's going to be making a million dollars in just a few months. Wow. So she said, <laughs> so that is a type of network marketing that you hurt your friend. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if it's too good to be true, usually it is, right? <laughs> That's why one of the Jason Shim lecture, I love his lecture. I, I pretty much hear all his lecture. On one of his uh, Zoom meeting, I think he mentioned about, you know, when you want to start your enemy business, don't even try to say to your friend that, hey, I'm trying this business venture. I will be making over 50,000 a month. Would you like to help me? Your friend probably say you're crazy or probably they don't want you to succeed. They said no. <laughs> but if you say, I'm in this business venture called Atomy from South Korea. I want to make maybe like $100, $200 extra income, extra money a month. Would you like to help me? Most of your friends probably say, sure, I'll help you. What should I do? Buy some product from Atomy, right? It's easier to say that you want to achieve something closer, but like you saw Kim said, I'm going to make millions of dollars in three months. What is this? Pyramid scheme. Although you know that an atomy, we're going to all make 50,000 a month. But if you say that in the beginning, people say, what is this? Pyramid scheme, money game, Ponzi scheme? <laughs> no, thank you. Right. But you say that, okay, I will make about a hundred dollars, maybe top 200, 300 dollars. Would you like to help me out as a friend? Right. So that's a good thing as well. Thanks, Mr. Kim. Crystal said, according to our CEO, all Tomians should have a good heart. That is the key because we have a clean conscience when we share about the company and its product. Yeah, because our company and our product don't hurt anyone. Anyone hurt by using our Atomy toothpaste, toothbrush? Not at all. We save money. I save a lot of money when my wife switched from the Japanese product to Atomy product skincare. I save a lot of money, then I can buy things that I wanted <laughs> from that money, right? So the last one, 80, 20% rule in productivity. What can you give examples? Anyone? Remember, we are in the business of network marketing. Productivity, we have to this is the this is the key that we know that our business is progressing or not. Yeah, so go ahead. Invest in people. Yeah, invest in people. I don't know. I because I'm still learning about this. Um, for us also. Um, that, that's one of them, because yeah, because I, with the people, I, that is where the income is, right? Yeah. Yeah. We're not so working alone in Atomy, in network marketing. Yeah. We're working with people. Which is, that is no, true. We don't only invest in ourselves, but we invest in our partners so that when we invest in partners, they have what we have, then it will duplicate not only in network, but also duplicate in time. So productivity will triple, quadruple, and the numbers will continue to go. That's true. Yeah. I think Israel Kim gave a very good example when Crown Master Jason Sim called him. So probably he checked out his productivity level. Oh my goodness, my leg here is not performing well. Hey, Israel Kim, are you still crazy anatomy? Am I right? <laughs> so we are all here CEO. Remember this, we are all here CEO. We are the number one. Don't look at Mr. Yun as your CEO. He's not our number one. We are the number one, remember this. 
we should be looking our charts on the left, on the right, who are our partners are not producing well. Then invest your time in them, just like Jessica says. You need to identify. Remember, you don't have 100% energy all the time, all the day. You only have 100% maybe in the morning, right? You need to spend all your energy to this 20% groups of people that you want to work with because this will generate the 80% of your income. Do the most important things when you have the most energy. That is the key. And then you save all the small works, email, chatting, maybe when you are tired. <laughs> maybe that is the last thing that I'm doing on my bed, doing uh, you know, emailing maybe to the office, maybe doing the admin work stuff, like uh, doing this small thing that's not really important. But the things that really important, I'm doing it in the morning when I have the most energy level, right? That is your 80-20% in productivity. So this is the closing word for everyone. I think this is also important uh, if you want to apply it in your business in Atomy. Before you do something, always ask yourself, is this 20% task that I'm going to do will give 80% of my result? If the answer is yes, do it. But if the answer is no, skip it. Maybe you can do it later. Try it, give it a try and see what happens in the next vision meeting. Maybe you give, share the next time. Thank you so much, Israel Kim. I really appreciate your part of, uh, principal lecture today. I'd like to invite you to give a comment or one or two comments. You, you've been quiet today. I've been listening. I've been busy listening and making notes. <laughs> so uh, thank you so much, uh, Israel and Mike and Jessica for your comments. Um, it's so important that as, as you said, that we need to put our energy where we're going to get the, the maximum result. So really um, the key is duplication, isn't it? Because we don't want to be keep doing the things which uh, requires our time. So we want to like, you know, the things that you want to delegate for other people's to do, to share, share the workload. So really identifying uh, the leaders. I mean, that doesn't mean that we forget about other other members. Uh, we still give time for them, but um, because time is so precious, that we need to really invest our time wisely. And um, we we are all learning. Um, I'm I, I will admit that my time management is is not that great, but I'm always trying to improve. Um, and uh, that is why we are continuing to to learn because learning is very important part of what's going to give us results right and i just want to um just remind you that atomy really is the only opportunity that uh, an average person can have to become that less than one percent uh, in the future I've just had the latest, a um, uh, little bit of further information, and um, I've got a list of 10 top uh, network marketing uh, distributors in the world. And it's interesting because ma majority of them are USA companies. And as you know, network marketing uh, is um, originally started from USA. And our company is so different because of the um, our chairman's vision. And uh, although network marketing is a great concept, um, it is for um, those people who have a lot of um, a lot of experience and so forth. Whereas Atomy, I'm sure you've heard that anyone can do this because the system is in place and all we have to do is just experience the product and you just share our experience. We're not selling. So just to give you an example, the the top, uh, the number one network marketing uh, distributor in the world um, is from Netherlands. 
and he earns $25 million a year. And the second person is from USA and earns about 12 million. Number three is 11 million, 10 million, 10, 10, seven, 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 six. Top 10 people earns way over 6 million. Now that is, that's ridiculous. <laughs> Just imagine uh, what 80% or even 99% of the people are making in those um, companies. Um, we have our ceiling. So the income that we can earn is uh, maximi maximized at 50,000, right? So it's giving all of us an opportunity to earn a reasonable income, which is 50 to 100,000 a month. That's over a million dollars. That would be way enough for majority of people, right? So the idea is that all of us can become uh, wealthy in many ways, not just in, 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 money, in monetary terms, but also learn the, the motto that we have and have balanced life. And that you cannot get from other companies. So that is so valu valuable. And if we understand what we have in our hand, we will want to spend our time wisely. So um, I hope that you continue to learn and really feel what our company is all about. So thank you very much for sharing tonight and um, we'll see you soon. <laughs> thank you, back to you, Mike. Yeah, thank you, Ju. So anyone here still doing Atomy part-time? I would like to see, maybe raise your hand or who is here doing Atomy part-time? It's been not your full-time. I'm part-time. Still... Part-time, Christina part-time. Part-time, Christina. <laughs> okay, I'm still part-time as well. <laughs> Don't be shy. It's okay to be part-time. Okay, quite a handful of people still doing Atomy part-time. So what is the most challenging when you are doing Atomy part-time? Can someone share or maybe type in the chat? Judy, Patsy, Pearly, Chriselle, these are the one raise hands. Maybe give like one minute. What is your the most challenging moment when you're doing oh, any part? Hi, hi. Yeah, Chris. Hi, sir, Mike. Yeah, yeah hi, go good ahead. evening to everyone. So I'm from the Philippines and I'm doing uh, Atomy as part time. I actually shared this with uh, Good Morning Atomy for Philippine edition. Oh, that, okay. Uh, I will watch it. <laughs> watch it. <laughs> yes, sure, go ahead. The most, um, the most challenging part of uh, doing Atomy as part time mm -hmm. is the time itself, because usually if uh, you're not going to give uh, priorities in doing Atomy, like uh, uh, not giving like an hour for Atomy a day, then for sure you will really be uh, lost in your direction in your goals for Atomy because of the so many tasks of the other work that you have. So um, what I've shared in the Good Morning Atomy is that um, doing part-time, you have to really set your goals and priorities and give time to Atomy. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you for sharing, Chriselle. Anyone else? Uh, Pearl, Patsy, I think Judy was raising her hand previously, was it? Yeah, um, for me, it's the same. It's basically meeting the demand um, on your time with because I'm actually running two businesses. Um, so the demand on your time and attention, that is the most challenging. Um, because of I was actually talking to Ju before. Um, I, I have a, my own little practice in tax consulting and accounting. So I've been doing that for over 20 years and it, it's um, I've got a core group of clients that I have to look after uh, year in, year out. Um, and I was just um, telling Drew that I recently just um, did my challenge in um, Semi Sales Master. I got to, you know, meet that, met that target and I had um, 
the most fant fantastic time. And I was telling Drew that, you know, I got to the point where I'm really trying to decide, do I give up my um, accounting practice and do this? But also at the same time, it's um, one of the businesses maintaining my um, professional registration and, and qualification and the time spent on that. It's uh, you know, the tax knowledge I've accumulated, you know, through my life. I really, it's uh, it's a shame to give it up and to just you know, because to me, tax knowledge is paramount in conducting you know day to day, um, especially in business. So, and um, I am at the crossroad at the moment, deciding whether I want to focus full time on atomy, give this up completely, and it is something that I need to, you know, give a bit of thought to. Um, interestingly, I'll just this is just an aside, I haven't told Drew this yet, but um, last week a, a professional colleague contacted me and asked me to, if I wanted to do more work um, with him, um, basically go partnership and he's going to give me more tax work. <laughs> and I didn't know what to say to him. So, um, yeah, it's, it's basically the, the meeting the demand on your time. Yeah, thank you, Judy. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> so Patsy Tan, what is your most challenging yeah. when you're a part-timer? Oh, well, I guess it's like trying to find the time, you know, and time management is very important. Um, sometimes because I do meals catering and, you know, I'm cooking, preparing the meals. And then by the time I finish everything at night, it's quite tiring. And still, I have to try to find the time to make time to try to contact my downlines, you know, to follow up and all this. So I guess uh, it's challenging to try to manage my time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So what is uh, the business that you're doing, catering? Like a food catering? Catering, meals catering. I'm doing meals catering. Every day? Meals, meals, every day. Every day? Uh, lunch oh, okay. Well, lunch that's a lot of, lot of work, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> because my wife him, uh, herself hates cooking. <laughs> I can understand <laughs> a lot of dishes to be washed, meals, meals to prep. Wow. Yeah, the preparation, yes, the preparation, the cooking, and then, uh, you know, I deliver to my uh, customers as well. So, yeah, yeah. yeah, trying to, yes, to see, you know, sometimes I feel that, oh, by the time I get back in the night, it's, you know, I, I finish everything, the washing up. It's quite, it's quite tiring, but I still have to find my time to do atomy as well mm -hmm. and to attend Zoom meetings. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you, Patsy, for sharing your experience with the most challenging time when doing, doing part-time. Yes, thank you everyone. So we've heard like three people share their uh, experience about the most challenging time in doing how to be part-time. What, what is the word? Time. Time. It's not about rejection, right? I, I was expecting about, oh my God, I was rejected with this, with that. Nobody says about rejection. Most, the, all of them says time. So time management, is really crucial in our business, especially when you are not a full-time. When you are a part-timer like me, I only have a handful of time every every day. I was driving four hours a day before, right? I work eight hours. I have to do running around uh, another two hours. I only have like four to six hour extra time at, at home. I can either choose to watch Korean drama, Netflix, or chatting with friends, or I do anime, right? Good thing I did. Out of me. <laughs> so that's where I am today, right? So when you are part timer, of course, Pareto principle, like Sharon Rose Master Israel can already explain, that is really important to identify who are these twenty percent that you want to focus with. And with that, you should be tracking your progress with the productivity. If you're a leader, you have to know who are your key partners that you want to work with and then focus on those key peoples. Not all of them, just some key peoples, right? So um, Carmen says, sauce mat, social media challenge when you are employed. Uh, Carmen, would you like to share? What do you mean, the sauce mat challenge? Um, you know, when you're employed, and um, especially for if you're a teacher, you, have, you are 
sorry, Carmen, your voice is kind of in and out. Oh, yeah, the, the voice. Yeah. It's kind of static. Oh, no. Uh, oh, okay. Um, social media. Yeah, this Sometimes is better. When, yeah, when you're employed and, 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 and your company is selling something, it doesn't have to be the same. But sometimes when you keep on posting other things, you know, sometimes and, and, and you have um, in your friends list co-workers and stuff and they get to notice it. And, you know, sometimes the reception is not really on a positive side. Sometimes you get, I mean, that's why you're um, like me personally. I'm very careful. So I don't mm -hmm. really, as much as I want to, you know, share, I'm excited of the dish detergent mm -hmm. and the... Uh, and everything, but uh, you know, um, it's just you just have to be prudent, you know, also, so that you don't I and mean, you don't get into um, um, you don't you don't you don't get noticed on a negative way, something like social media. You mean you know? Sorry, uh, let me get this clear. You mean that you select what you post on your social media because you don't want your friends to know? No, not not really. It's not that. More of, um, it's more of um, I'm just. Uh, Absolutely, Michelle, uh, the one that shared before me, uh, knows this. <laughs> it's that, um, um, yeah, I can't talk about this. Anyway, um, it's just, um, I'm just being careful, you know. I don't, I don't get, uh, I don't get to uh, post a lot of um, post about uh, uh, my other, my my other uh, what's it called, side business. If you see, oh. uh, if you mean, okay, something like that. She cannot, she cannot actually. Uh, Sorry, say she again. cannot actually. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she cannot post um, about Atomy that much in her social media because of some rules of the office. So that's why she uh, her sharing about Atomy using the social media is a little restricted. Okay. All right. So you have the regulation from your company that you cannot work with other businesses, especially with dental marketing. Is that right, right? Okay, yeah, I got that, yeah. Yeah, some of them like that. I know some of my members, they are afraid to be known that he is doing Atomy, and that is the one of the challenges, yeah. Thank you, Carmen, thank you so much, yeah. And Marilo said, time management at times have to steal some work hours to attend to Atomy when need arises. <laughs> That's what I did too. I stole my work hours when I was working at the office, right? That's true. Crystal said, setting priorities and giving Atomy time on daily basis. We have 24 hours a day, eight hours for work, maybe eight hours or less for sleep, another eight hours for doing others, which means we can really give at least an hour a day for Atomy. Yeah. This is what I say to my members. In Atomy, we are not paid by how much we want it to be paid. We are paid how much we deserve in enemy, right? Some people only work 15 minutes, but they want to be paid eight hours. I don't think so, right? <laughs> they don't deserve eight hours pay. So it is really a, really a very challenging um, aspect in time when you're a part-timer. And it's not easy, I know especially when you're just running around or when you are not able to do enemy on the side together with your daytime job it is a challenge but always set some priorities and always set a target that you want to achieve every day at least you know that if you achieve it then you know that you are going to progress a lot of people says this mike i'm only successful when i become a diamond master or when I become an auto sales master receiving the pin from enemy, or maybe a Sharon Rose master like Israel Kim, right? But you know, success is not a destination. You've heard the, the, that quote, right? So many times, success is not a destination. Success is a journey, a daily journey, weekly journey, monthly journey, every day. If you achieve your daily target, that is a success, right? When you get your auto sales master pin, like all the leaders here, that's not a success. That is a recognition of our successes every day, every month, persevering in terms of the hardship, right? 
So success is not a destination. You don't wait until you have a million dollar in the bank, then you call yourself a successful Atomian. You don't. You should be successful every day until the day that you get recognized by the enemy company. That is the true success, right? Uh, let me look all this uh, through the chats. Israel <laughs> Kim says, my dishwashing time was the enemy video watching time. I'm like that too. <laughs> it's okay. That's why I never complain when my wife, after finish all the cooking, I was the one volunteering doing the dishes because I put my earplugs, turn on the admin video, watch it, listen it for an hour. I enjoy my dishwashing time. All right. Progress, not perfection. Yes, success is a journey. Small wins every day. Achieving my time timetable daily is a success for me. Good consistency and stick to it yeah every day should be a success that's great everyone so i'm thank you again Sandals master Israel came to close our season for the vision meeting at the international so it is a great topic for everyone to learn i hope everyone is excited and inspired so we're gonna close with our company model uh, i would like to ask walter can you share your screen the company model sure can mike here we Thank go. You, Walter. Okay. And... Oh, I am not worthy. I, I, I have to get oh. permission to share. Sorry, uh, try again, Walter. I just turned it on. There we go. Uh, here we are. And let's make it a little bit bigger. And can we all see that? Yeah, we can yes. see it. Everyone unmute right. your microphone and let's chat out the loudest for the last time of our vision meeting class today. All right, go ahead, we Walter. Okay, okay. Cherish the spirit. The spirit. Create the vision. Follow the faith. Serve in humility. Aja, aja, aja. Yeah. Thank you so yeah. much, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, 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 Thank you, Israel. See you in a few weeks. Thank you, Israel. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Like, 좋아요, 눌러주세요. <laughs>